This is Danny Flexen and Joe Lee here for Seconds Out. We decided, as we've not um, got into the bubble this time around, we're going to do um, some mini fight reviews yeah. of each of the main three fights on Matchroom Show at Wembley Arena. So the three female fights in their historic triple header. And we've just watched Rachel Ball uh, win the WBC interim Super Bantamweight title, not the belt she thought she'd be fighting for at the start of the week. Um, but with a, I would say, relatively comfortable decision victory over Georgelina Guanini. What, what did you make of it? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think rounds three and four are the only only rounds Rachel Ball didn't get the victory in. Um, and that was only due to, you know, Guanini came out, landed a bit more. Um, well, she was loading up on her shots, throwing leather. Um, and I think that was a game plan all along, really, try and get a puncher's chance because... The, other than rounds three and four, Rachel Ball completely controlled the fight. Uh, she had a really nice, strong jab throughout um, rounds nine and ten. She actually went for the knockout because she was that comfortable. So, um, other than the, the, the third and the fourth, it was it was um, as you'd expect. Yeah, I thought she um, she dictated well from the centre of the ring. I thought um, she thrust out long straight shots, kept her pinned back. Obviously, Guanini a lot shorter, hadn't fought for nearly a year and a half, and you know, she was, she was quite mobile early on and I thought she was quite sharp with her punches. But I think as the rounds went on, her inactivity began to tell a bit as well. Yeah, definitely. She was looking for being as the smaller fighter. She looked for the overhand right a lot. Um, it's a shot that you can get a lot of power on when you're the smaller fighter as well. Um, and she did that throughout. But um, I agree with what you said there as well, yeah. If I did have a criticism of Rachel Ball's performance, and we have to try and be balanced, I suppose, it's that... Every time Guanini did manage to land, and it was certainly more in the first half of the fight than the second, she seemed to feel the need to kind of flurry back and attack yeah. recklessly at times to, to kind of get her, her shot back, if you like. And yeah. she needs to kind of evolve out of that mentality, I think, because she's got those physical advantages, not just at Super Bantam, but if the Bantam fight had gone ahead it would against Bridges, it would have been even more pronounced. So I think she needs to realise that, you know, there are times when you can step away, circle the perimeter, time your opponent, draw counters, which she did later on, actually, to good effect. Mm -hmm. I think we saw that against Shannon Courtney as well, that she, once she's tagged, she likes to fight back straight away, and I don't think that's always the best option. Yeah, no, I think she wanted to get the respect of Guanini so that she doesn't get tagged in the same way she does, um, so that when she hits her, she knows she's going to have to move out of the way straight away. Um, and she was certainly doing that early on. But yeah, towards the end of the fight, like you say, it was just a... A matter of she was actually really good in the on the inside Rachel Ball, um, and she didn't get hot, hit near as much as uh, in those first few. So, yeah, I mean, I felt for Guanini a little bit. She seemed to have the semblance of of being a good fighter. You know, her shots were quite sharp. She was quite dangerous with the overhand right, particularly. Yeah, really, but yeah, yeah, movement was good early on until she started to tire. And I just felt like if she'd had a bit more notice, if this fight was the one that was originally planned all along, obviously Ebony Bridges got a shoulder injury and couldn't fight. And then there was the issues with the weight. She shaved her head during fight week as well, Guanini. But I don't know if that was an attempt to make weight or just a style, <laughs> style change. But, you know, I think if she'd have come in, it had been planned for a few months and she'd had the fight camp behind her. Um, we might have seen an even more competitive fight. She might have done herself justice. Potentially. Um, I think... Rachel Ball was always going to come out with the win for me, regardless of what weight it was. Uh, maybe there was a difference in how she performed because of the weight it was at as well. But for me, um, no, I just saw Rachel Ball was too hungry all fight week. Um, and I feel like she's really going to push on now um, and, and actually get her first world title, not an interim. <laughs> yeah, I caught a snippet of Johnny Nelson on Squire just before we um, hooked up the call. Yeah. And he was saying he saw elements in Rachel Ball's performance that made him think she's going to become a fully-fledged world champion and reigned for a long time and I'm not saying he's wrong you know that could definitely happen but I didn't see enough in that performance to say it's a foregone conclusion you know you look at the people who are world champions now even not the very best world champions in the female game at the moment but people like Terry Harper as an yeah. example and she's not there yet for me you know yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with that given her lack of experience but if they're going to put titles on in, on the line for inexperienced fighters, it does put a lot of pressure on their shoulders. 
Spot on. I was literally about to say that. I feel like the pressure she's received over the last week and, and actually her fight with Shannon Courtney as well has been a lot different. Being as that she's been in bubbles, actually entering the ring on fight nights different to how most world champions would do. Um, and, and I think she's only going to grow and get better with the, the more publicity she, she encounters um, and the more sort of... Um, I guess you could say of an all-round fighter, she is in and out of the ring. I feel like that'll take some of the pressure off uh, in the ring and actually make her become a better fighter. All right, well, that's what um, Joe and I think. We want to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments below. We're going to go and watch uh, Terry Harper against Katrina Tanders. And yeah. we'll be back with the fight review for that. Um, can't say we're not delivering. We're not in the bubble, but we <laughs> might as well be. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll see you in an hour or so. And, um, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you.